Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and if you've ever wondered what the difference is between a trigger point and a fascial adhesion, hopefully I'm going to answer that for you today. And I say hopefully because I just have to be totally transparent. I have not been trained in trigger point therapy, um, even though I learned a little bit about that in massage school back in 2008. Uh, but like you, I can take to the internet and read other people's uh, definitions of a trigger point. And from what I understand, and this goes all the way back to my training in 2008, and it still seems to be current um, accepted theory or definition, a trigger point is a, you know, a tender or sore spot, uh, connective tissue and muscle combined, um, that when pressed, refers pain to a different location than the area being pr pressed. Um, whether that's, you know, by another person, if you're getting a massage or you're working on yourself. Um, and I guess a trigger point could definitely be a fascial adhesion, but the main difference would be that referred pain. So if it's referring pain somewhere else, uh, let's say you're pressing on these knots up here in your traps, um, or somewhere in your neck, and let's say you get some referred pain down your arm or into your mid-back, then that might be a trigger point. Uh, and when I was in massage school, what we kind of learned about that was just to like press and hold, um, and supposedly it would start to dissipate that referred pain. Uh, and again, that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge about trigger point therapy itself, since I don't have extensive training in that and I've never done it myself professionally. Uh, but I've never really uh, experienced my clients having a ton of referred pain. It happens sometimes, um, but doing fascia release since 2008. So I'm stepping on people, sometimes I'm using my elbows, and I'm finding fascial adhesions, trying to release them to get people out of pain. And every once in a while, someone will have some referred pain from an area that I'm stepping on or working on to release that fascia, but it's pretty rare. So I find that kind of interesting, um, and I'm, it makes me wonder, so I'm postulating this theory and would love to hear your thoughts because I don't claim to know everything. I love to have discussions. I'm still a student myself. I'm still learning. Uh, but it makes me wonder if a trigger point is actually in part created by the pressing. Because when there's pressing into tissue without a lot of movement or, you know, on the part of the, either the practitioner or the client, or if you're doing it to yourself, um, like if they're not trying to like kind of scrub it out or um, massage it or release it in some manner, or if you um, are getting something like, you know, a massage and you are not moving, or if you're doing fascia release and you simply you know, like you find a spot and you're just holding it, but you're not actually moving and trying to shear those fascial fibers. Um, it makes me wonder if that in itself is partly what creates the trigger effect. Just a thought. But what I have experienced uh, is the clients of mine that do have the occasional spots where we're working on it, compression and movement-based fascia release, uh, if they can come to me consistently, their fascial adhesions start to go away, the pain or intensity itself of the fascia release gets increasingly less intense and then potentially feels like nothing if they're going towards optimization and relatively quickly in my practice, they stop feeling that referred pain. So the referred pain tends to be kind of like an initial reactivity to maybe an extremely tight fascial restriction restriction or adhesion, um, and if you are able to release it effectively, then that referred pain typically goes away fast. Now, the referred pain may not be, say, the pain you came to me with, or maybe you're coming to this channel uh, looking for pain relief for something in particular. To use the example I just gave, maybe you know you have all, like, all kinds of knots here, but what you're actually trying to solve is mid-back pain or neck pain or elbow pain or shoulder pain. Um, just finding a trigger point and identifying where it refers to, in my opinion, doesn't tell you a whole lot about the root cause of whatever pain you're trying to solve. 
So uh, that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge about trigger points versus factual adhesions. There's probably some overlap there for sure. Um, but I've been getting asked this question a lot lately, so I thought I would answer it here for you on YouTube. Uh, and I would really love to turn it over to you now. So do you know a lot about trigger point therapy? Have you been a client of somebody and had a great experience or maybe a not so great experience? I don't know. Um, and if you've never experienced it, just curious kind of what you would theorize if you've maybe been with me long enough or you know about fascia and fascial adhesions. Uh, so yeah, share your thoughts. What are your thoughts on trigger points versus fascial adhesions? Are they the same thing? Is there some overlap there or they're totally different? Uh, you can share your comments in uh, the comment section below and I'll definitely come talk to you there. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We have new videos that go out every Monday and Wednesday all about fascia, fascia release, pain, pain relief, nervous system, healing trauma, all those good things. Uh, and I would love for you to join my email community if you are new here and you haven't already joined. I share stories and tips there I don't anywhere else and you can do that by clicking the link below in the description and I've got some free resources for you, including my top five uh, self-help techniques. We've got some downloads for you that will help you walk, help walk you through all five of those techniques, among other things. Uh, so yeah, share your thoughts below. I'll see you there and I'll see you next time. You